Hi there, my name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is my quarantine lair. And I would like to welcome you to ECE 3084, Signals and Systems. Suppose you're in the market for an amplifier, and you found that you can get a really good deal on an amplifier from the Acme Amplifier Corporation called the Acme SFO. Now, the people who make the Acme SFO say that they'll give you an amplifier with an amazing gain, a gain of K equals 200,000. So that's a whole ton of gain. That's awesome. But there's a catch. The amplifier has limited bandwidth. So this gain is only the gain at DC. You could actually model the amplifier as a one-pole low-pass filter with a cutoff of omega C, where FC, the cutoff frequency in hertz, is just 6 hertz. So although that 200,000 figure looks impressive at first, this 6 hertz is an incredibly low cutoff frequency. So the trick we're going to use is to use some negative feedback. In the feedback loop, I'm going to put a very simple system that's just a multiplication by a factor beta. So we have our output over here, we have our input here, and I'll even switch colors here to emphasize that we're using negative feedback. So Black's formula tells us that the closed loop transfer function is going to be h1 of s over 1 plus h1 of s times h2 of s, and that's going to equal k omega c over s plus omega c, all over 1 plus k omega c over s plus omega c, times beta, and then clearing the fraction, I'll have k omega c in the numerator, then s plus omega c replaces 1, and then I'll have beta k omega c, giving us k omega c all over s plus 1 plus beta k times omega c. So basically what we've done is we've moved the pole. I had a pole that was originally sitting at minus omega c, and it's moved out. So we now have a new pole that's sitting at minus 1 plus beta omega c. So this has squooshed out, and we've improved the bandwidth. We have a new cutoff frequency that's increased by a factor of 1 plus beta k. However, this did not come for free. If we look at what the DC response is now, we plug in j omega for s and then plug in 0 for omega. The s here winds up going away and the omega c's cancel. I'm left with k over 1 plus beta k. And as a sanity check, if I were to set beta equal to 0, this term would go away and I would wind up with k again. So using negative feedback winds up lowering the DC gain, but this gives me a mechanism to trade off gain with bandwidth. And the scheme has another advantage. That number I gave you earlier for a K equals 200,000, this actually varies quite a lot. It varies from unit to unit that we might buy from the manufacturer, and more importantly, it will vary drastically with operating conditions, particularly temperature. So, if you take a look at the expression here, notice that we could approximate this as 1 over beta for the special case of large k. If you take the limit of this as k goes to infinity, then at some point the 1 here gets swamped by the beta k term. So that 1 essentially drops out and then the k's cancel. So this is great because you could set the DC gain by just picking beta, and if you can set that beta using components that don't vary drastically with temperature, then you're effectively compensating for the fact that the K in the amplifier itself does vary with temperature. Now let's leave the realm of abstract block diagrams and go into the specific world of circuits. The Acme SFO is something you can actually buy from a whole bunch of real-life manufacturers. It's called the 741 op-amp. 
So let's now imagine that X and Y, instead of being abstract signals, are in fact voltages. And my voltage representing X is going into the positive terminal of an op amp. So the voltage representing X of T is going into the positive terminal. And now I need to figure out how to implement this beta factor here. Well, let's first of all assume that beta is going to be less than 1. And I guess while we're at it, we should also say it's bigger than zero, so it is in fact negative feedback. I'm wanting to restrict beta to be less than one because if it's bigger than one, that means that H2 itself is an amplifier made with transistors or vacuum tubes or whatever, and it's going to be subject to all the same problems of varying K that we're dealing with up here. So let's build beta using resistors, purely passive elements. So let's put in a voltage divider. I'll have a resistor here I'll call RF. And then I'll put another resistor here, RG, that's going to ground. I'm using F to stand for feedback and G to stand for ground, but you could call these whatever you want. So this resistive divider determines the amount of negative feedback. Beta is going to be equal to RG over RF plus RG, according to our usual resistive divider rules. And notice something interesting here. If I take this beta and I substitute it into my formula for the closed loop transfer function at DC, in this case for large K, I wind up with one over beta, which is just RF plus RG over RG. And while I could rewrite that as one plus RF over RG. And this formula should look familiar. If you don't see it quite yet, let me just redraw this circuit slightly. I'll flip the positive and negative terminals. I'm putting my input down here to the positive terminal, and then I have a resistor going to ground from the negative terminal. And now I have my feedback resistor, and there's my output. This is a standard non-inverting op-amp configuration that you'll find in your standard sophomore level circuits courses, such as ECE 2040. Notice that we did not start from the golden op-amp rules here, other than assuming that the output here can generate whatever current and voltage is needed, and assuming that there's no current flowing into the input terminals here. But we didn't start out with any assumptions that the voltages at the positive and negative terminals were being forced to be the same by the negative feedback. Now, if you make those golden op amp rule assumptions and assume that the voltage at the input here is replicated at the negative terminal, then you can derive this formula by writing a Kirchhoff's current law equation here at the negative terminal. But that kind of analysis doesn't give you any indication about how somebody might have thought of this circuit to begin with. By looking at this kind of higher level analysis, it gives you a sense about how somebody might have created this kind of circuit. Now, resistors will also change the resistance and other qualities with temperature. They're not ideal in real life, of course. But the degree to which they vary with temperature isn't anywhere close to the degree to which transistors will change their characteristics with temperature. And you can buy resistors with very precise resistances, 1%. If you want to spend a lot of money, you could even get something like 0.1% or whatever. And the way we split up the duties here, where we have a system that has a lot of variability that we can't deal with directly, but we have some other elements we can build things with that we can specify quite precisely. We take the elements that we're uncertain about, those are our feed forward elements, and then the kind of elements that we can specify precisely, those go into the feedback loop. That's a general principle of engineering that extends far beyond just electrical engineering.